Stepping it up one more notch, we're going to create this lovely model right here. As always, I'm going to be starting with a brand new file, so I'll press Ctrl N to create a new file. And the lovely disclaimer, Plasticity 0.5.41 is very much still in development. Expect things to break. Please, please, please go through all of the videos before for going to this one here. They're gonna be linked down in the description. Down there, you will also find the feedback form, the Discord, and a whole bunch of other stuff like the shortcut sheet. So make sure that you follow this from the start. With that lovely disclaimer out of the way, remember, this is in development and things will break. Let's get making. So I'm gonna start actually with a solid this time. I'm gonna do a corner box right here. The shortcut is Shift C. Click this, and this is a three click operation. I'll click the origin, click it out, pull it up, and there we have it. I'm gonna use the shortcuts now to put in some dimensions. So I'll press D. This one here is going to be 40. I'll press H for the height. This will be 50. And then I'll press F for the length, which will be 100. Hit enter, right click to confirm. And then let's take a look out here. So I'm gonna actually use a face to do a sketch on instead of our plane here. So I'm gonna click on our corner rectangle. I'm gonna go down to this bottom corner, left click, go up to the middle point here, left click, right click to confirm. I'm gonna create another one now, a corner rectangle, and I'm on purpose going from up here because then I'll have the gizmos going down in this direction. So I'll click here, bring this across to there, Perfect, I'll press D and I'll type in 10, hit enter, right click to confirm, and oh dear, we have a repeatable bug that I've had here that this face doesn't sort of join up to this one over here. How do we fix this? Well, remember when things go weird, all we have to do is press Control R and usually it will sort itself out. So there you have it. Now we've got that face created and I'm sure you already know what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna shift click that face and cut it across there. And I want this to be an intersection Boolean though. So let's take a look down here. We have E for intersection Boolean. You could actually make this a whole new object, but I'm just gonna do E for intersection Boolean. Right click to confirm that. And then I'm gonna press two, select these and just hide these away. I'm gonna select this edge here. And this time I'm gonna use the shortcut of D, type in 30, hit enter and right click to confirm that. And now I quickly want to go through some new shortcuts. We have viewport snapping using the numpad one, seven and three. If you wanna see, for instance, the other side of number one here, hold down control, and then that will give you the opposite side of things. So number three, the opposite side, holding down control. Number seven, the opposite side, holding down control. Okay, now I'm telling you all this because I don't want you to get confused with spacebar. Spacebar is a special little thing here, which when you just press it with nothing selected, it takes you to this top view, but it's not actually the top view. What it's actually wanting you to do is have a face selected. So if I select this curved face here, and now I press spacebar, have you noticed the view that we're currently in? This is actually the construction plane of this view. So if I were to select this face and press space, it is the construction plane. Now, what do I mean by that? I'll draw something here in this top construction plane view for this top face. I'll go out, I'll press number seven, and I'll now go and draw another thing right here. Okay, Ooh, let me just draw it, come on, draw this out, perfect. And now you can see the difference of what a construction plane is. Okay. Undoing that, I want to show you as well that you can save these construction planes. Here we have the construction plane panels, and right here we have a temporary save. Let's click this, and you'll see that we have a new custom plane. What exactly does that do? Well, that moves the grid. So if we click here, it's now moved the grid over to that construction plane. You can make the grid smaller and bigger by holding down control and using the scroll wheel, but this is still very much still in beta. So it does not that much. You can work with it right this minute and I haven't really explored it that deeply. So I'll press the XY to bring back my grid there. And I'm saying all of this because I wanna click this face, hit space, and then build the rest of my sketch right here. So I'm going to select my corner rectangle. I'm going to go to that midpoint right here, click it. I'm going to use the shortcut of alt to bring this out like this. Then I'll press D. I'll type 
in 10. Now, when I say 10, it is 10 all of this, not from the center outwards. And the length doesn't really matter to me because I'm going to move that around now. So this one, I'm just going to pull all the way across here. This one here, I'm going to hold down control to snap it to that edge right there. I'm happy with that. Okay, let's talk about another quick plane constraint. So here we have our center circle radius. We can know that when we go up to a face, it's snapping to that face. But then when we go off that face, it's snapping to the X, Y. What if I wanted it to snap to the face out here? Well, all I have to do is hold down shift. And then as I drag out here, you'll see that I'm still on that fast plane. So I can just go and click that in there and you'll see that it's gone and made that right there. Okay, so now that I've shown that off a little bit, I'm not actually going to be using it. I just wanted to show you it. Let's create a circle from the midpoint outwards that way. I'm going to press D. I'm going to type in a 15 and then I'll hit enter. I'm happy with that. Right click to confirm. I'm going to press G on the Y and we're going to go minus 15. Hit enter and right click once again because I want to do a precision movement. Yes, I could just sort of add this up in my head, but I just want to show you that if I were to, for instance, put in minus 10 now on the Y, so I'll go Y minus 10, Oh dear, that's not quite what I expect. That's because it's moving from the delta. The delta is the current position of where the last movement was, so to speak. So I'm going to hit enter, right click to confirm. Then I'm going to press G, Y, minus 10. And that's where I actually want it. Perfect. Right click, confirm that. Now let's do an offset loop. Remember, it's down here in the context menu. I'll press O. Take a look at where the arrow is. The arrow is going upwards, so that's a positive number. So I'm going to type in five here, hit enter, right click to confirm that. And now I want to do a nice little slot right here. So I'm going to click on the corner rectangle, click on the center middle there, pull that out, click alt. Then I'm going to click once again. Oops, it didn't do it right. Let me just get that correctly. There it is. Middle. Alt, there we go, out to the face. That's what I wanted. Press D, I'll type in two, hit enter. Happy with that. Right click, and I'm just going to pull that out across to here. And this is not quite the shape that I'm wanting. So I need to trim this up. Remember, we have that lovely tool here. This is the cut intersecting line. So we have T or trim, and I'm just going to start trimming these away. You can drag box trim, but I find you can lose a little bit of control when that happens. So just be aware of that. So there it is. I'm happy with that. Remember, right click to confirm you are in an operation when this is down here or you have shortcuts. So be aware of that. Right click confirming that. I'm going to zoom out, turning off my x-ray here. I'm going to press tab to make sure that I can select everything so I can select my solid and select the new face that I've made. I could join all this up, but why would I do that when I've got this lovely face already made? I'm going to pull that down. I want this to be an intersection, so I'll press E. Brilliant. Right click to confirm that. I'm going to actually select this solid, hide it, so then I can go press 2, select all of these, and press H to hide it as well, so I can bring back my solid on its own here. Okay, let's go and build that base solid as well. I'm going to do this this time from the top view, so I'll press 7. I'm going to create that sketch right here, so we'll go from the origin, pull that out to there. I'm going to go a D. This one here is going to be 40. Hit enter. And on the F, that's going to be 50. Hit enter. Right click confirm. I'm happy with how that is there. I'll press D now because I want to do a fillet to all of them. Press 7. Enter. Right click confirm. And now let's turn this into some real mesh. So let's go and click this. Sorry, I didn't mean mesh into a real solid. And let's pull this down. I'm going to go by minus five. I'm happy with that. And right click to confirm that. Now I'm going to press two, select that edge and hide it away. And it's time to add some concentric holes and that hole in the middle. It's time to go hole mad here. So let's do, I think let's go with a hole in the middle first. So I'm going to press three, select that face. We have that offset that is right here where you've gone offset loop. We're going to press O. Take a look at the arrow. It is positive. So on the positive, I'm going to go by 10. Happy with that. Enter. Right click confirm. And then I'm going to select the solid. So I'm going to press shift 4 to turn on my solid selection. Select that. Shift select. Push that through. Right click confirm. Happy with that. I'll select the edge 
right here just to make sure that I get it correctly and hide that away because I don't need it anymore. So let's do those concentric circles. Now there's a lovely snap that comes with concentric things automatically. So I'm going to click my center circle and there is my center concentric. As you see, the light turns on, it sort of illuminates the edge that it refers to. And I'm going to just pull that out and I'm going to make this a radius of three, hit enter, right click confirm. So I need to mirror this around. How am I going to do this? Because when we do a mirror, it goes over there, right? Not quite right. We're going to do our mirror operation and look at the shortcut. We have a freestyle here. So let's do a freestyle mirroring. So I'll press F and I want a freestyle mirror from the center and I'm going to bring that to this edge. So I tell it the mirroring axis. So right there on the X, I'm happy with that click and that has been mirrored. I can select it there. I'm going to use the shortcut this time. I think it is alt X for mirroring. It is. Then I'll press F and I'm going to go to the center over on the Y here. I'll click once again and we have everything all mirrored all the way around. Okay. I'm just going to now select my solid shift, select faces, select all of those faces there. And you already know what I'm doing here. I'm cutting them down right click happy with that and I'll just hide all of those so that I don't need to deal with them. I'm going to select the edges though now and add a nice little chamfer to all of these here. So I'll press D minus one, enter, right click, confirm that. And I think we should start adding some more holes. So there's a hole here that we've got to deal with and there's the lovely holes up on this curved surface. So let's deal with this one first. To do this hole, I think I'm going to use the power of concentric once again. So I'll select all of these edges there, press D, change that to five, enter, right click. I now know there's a concentric snap in the middle there. So I'll select my center circle, find the snap that highlights that edge, which is right there. Click it, pull it out. Brilliant. Press D. I'm going to go with a number two on this one. Hit enter, right click, confirm. I already have my solid technically selected because you can see it's all yellow. So I'm just going to turn on face select, select the face of that one there. Let's see, will it let me select it? If it doesn't let me select it, remember what we have to do when things go wrong like this. We just need to press control R to reload plasticity. It won't lose the data. And then we go back to this point here and I can now select my solid, select that face, pull that through, right click. I'm happy with that. So I'm just going to turn off these two solids here so I can select all of these sketches very quickly and just hide them away and I'll turn on my two solids back. There we have them. And I think what I'm going to do at this point is let's add the holes here. So how are we going to do this? Well, our temporary is gone because we did a reload and that's totally fine. But what we can do is select the face, just select here, press space. So we're now working on the normal of this face. Make sure that you have x-ray off. If not, you might go and snap to things on the other side. I'm going to click this circle center radius. I'm going to go from the center, go out, I'm going to press D and I'm going to go for a radius here of two. Hit enter, right click to confirm that. Okay, now I need to radial array this lovely thing. How am I going to radial array it? There's nothing there. Well, like I said, concentrics apply to pretty much all the curves. So there's actually automatic snapping over here. So let's go with that radial array. And then here we have it. Make sure that the edges light up. And there, click it. I'm going to actually go and sort of constrain this to only 45 degrees. Yep. And I'm also going to change the number here to three. That is exactly what I want. I'll click OK. And there we have those. All right. I think it's time to turn these into holes and then we'll deal with the next slot hole here. So I'll press shift four and then I'll select this, select the faces right here, pull them through and right click to confirm that. So I'll hide those in the meantime. And what happens if I wanted to very quickly, just quickly chamfer these? Well, there's a little trick to this. As long as you have edge selection on, you can actually go to the history and just left click. Don't do an alt click, just left click and it'll select all the edges to do with the history of that. So there we have that there. I'm going to press D. I'm going to go for a minus 0.5. 
and then I hit enter, right click to confirm that, and I'm happy with that operation there. And I'm sure you already know how I'm going to be doing that slot, so I'll just quickly do it. Select the face, press space, and at this point here, I'm going to go and actually bring back one of the circles. I think it was this first one here, because I want that center point snapping. So I can go here, go to that center, bring that out, press alt. So I get my nice little dialogue here, press D. I'm gonna change this to four this time. And I'm gonna go with the height of, what I've got written down here is 12. So I'll hit enter, right click to confirm that, and then I'll press D. So we bevel everything, press two, enter, I'm happy with that. So now it's time to do a rotational move. So how am I gonna rotate this out? Remember we have that free form rotation. So let's press R, then I'll press F for free form rotation. Let's find that snapping point. And I want it to go from that point there across here. Then I'm gonna to snap to the center. And here I'm gonna now go and type in here, minus 30, just cause that's the distance that I decided I wanted. And I'll click okay right there. Remember, this is still an active operation with the dialog box here and the shortcuts. We've got to right click to confirm that. So I'm going to select the solid. I'll shift three, select the face, pull that through, right click. I'm happy with that. And now I'm going to make sure that I have edge selection on. Click the last operation. I'll put in a D of one. Brilliant. Enter right click confirm and that's how quick that was done all right let's just finish polishing this all off i think we still have two solid objects here so let's join these up together with a lovely boolean so i'll select the base select the other one press q remember the shortcut is q once again for union and then i'll right click to confirm that now let's start adding some bevels all over this so i'm going to start i think with these corners right here I mean, I'm sneakily, what I'm basically doing is adding an entire tangent edge, and I'll show you that in a moment. So let's press D, three, enter, right click, brilliant. I'm gonna go over to these two here as well. I'm gonna go D minus one, enter, right click. I'm happy with that. I'll select these two as well here. Go D minus one, that's looking good there. Now I'm gonna go and select three edges here. I'm just going to go with this one here. Let's go with this one over here. Oops, I've deselected too much there and I selected too much. So let's select these three right there as well. Okay, I'm going to press D5, enter, right click to confirm that. I'm also going to select these two bottom edges here. And let's just get them. Yep. And I'll press D1. I'm happy with that. So what I've sneakily done here is created a gigantic tangent edge. You see all of this here. These are all tangent to one another. And what exactly does that mean? Well, it means that I can just select these four edges. Take a look. This one, this one, this one, and this one here. And now when I press D and 1, one gigantic tangent edge is done. I'll hit enter and right click to confirm that. And here we have our final design, all done and dusted. I'm pretty sure that was pretty full on, but we're now getting pretty close to almost knowing plasticity to its full way of power that it has. But there is a little bit more that I wanna cover and we'll do that in the next model. And of course, make sure you save your file as always. Now, if you want to share what you're making or get a little bit of help with Plasticity, you can join the MakerTales Discord where I have a Plasticity channel right there, or you can try and join the Plasticity Discord. And information for that will be down in the description or in the top pinned comment where I'll be keeping that as up to date as possible. If you're enjoying what I'm making here and you think I'm worthy of your support, you can join this lovely group of Xteam people, my lovely patrons. Thank you so very much. And a big thank you to my VIP makers, Jem Oskinacht and David Fernandez. It really means the world to me. Thank you for watching, keep making, and let the quest continue.